in the last few months, and well, really over the last couple of years, I've gone through a lot of soul searching financially, trying to be a better steward of my money and my time. And it's really not about how much money is in the bank account. It's about that sense of really believing that I'm giving consent and being mindful about the things that I'm doing and the things that I have in my life. And that brings me to my relationship with MMOs. If I was going to tell you what I thought was the best about Final Fantasy XIV, I would tell you the social emotes and the party finder and the the way dungeons work is pretty cool. I would say that the community is something which feels very large and established. There's a lot of things I would say are amazing about that game, and yet it's also a game where you will have to pay a subscription to participate in the game. It has a reasonably high cost of entry, and then it costs even more to keep on playing it. And then there's, in addition to all of the expense, the, the sense of obligation to play. It doesn't feel like it's just a game. It feels like there's this sort of a expectation that you're supposed to make the game almost a lifestyle. And that is really appealing. It's cool. I like the idea of being immersed in a world and getting lost in a digital universe and making friends online. I love it. Until you start telling me how I'm going to spend a Sunday afternoon. Until you start implying that I have to start changing my real-world lifestyle to build it around a game. Until you start making me feel like if I don't play a game, I'm wasting a subscription. All of those sorts of things are really toxic. And... So yeah, there's a few things that are really good about a game like Final Fantasy XIV. I would say the same of a title like Elder Scrolls Online. Amazing player housing. There's a beautiful world. There's maybe more well-designed cities. There's any number of things that I could point out about lots of MMOs, which would all add up to single reasons why those games are perhaps better than others. And yet, overall, I have to say that Guild Wars 2 strikes me as the best overall MMO. And the reason why is because it wins not at one specific thing, but at the overall bucket. It wins as a whole in a way that no other game in the MMO genre that I've experienced really does. One thing Guild Wars 2 does really well is player collaboration. It encourages people to play together. You don't have to join up in a guild. You don't have to plan it out according to a specific schedule. You can just log in and you're going to find events that other players are doing all around you. And even if you're not really trying to play with other people, the game incentivizes you to do so. And that is special. 
you might wind up doing an escort quest, you might wind up fighting a world boss with another hundred players around you. You can do it all without any advanced planning or jumping into Discord or anything like that. And it's a game that respects your time and respects your money by giving you the ability to truly just jump in and play if you feel like it without any need to have an active subscription. No penalty to make you feel like if you don't keep your subscription active, you're losing out on core aspects of gameplay. And it's important because so many games punish you for not having an active subscription. And you can say, well, it's only $15 a month. It's only a little bit of money. It's not that much. You know, if you go out to dinner, it's going to cost you 50 bucks. And that's true. But I don't necessarily want to go out to dinner and waste $50. You know, like these are things that I've tried to cut out in my life. But even so, if I choose to go to a restaurant and eat out, that's my prerogative. I'm not punished if I don't. And when you look at games, there's so many games you can get. You can get for $50, $60, a AAA title. And then you go into the MMO space. And I get it. It's a live game that people keep on playing. But so is Age of Empires. So is so many other games that people play all the time that are buy once and play forever sort of games, and occasionally they get an expansion pack or something like that. So you're telling me, can you really tell me that an MMO is worth a subscription if you really do the math? The truth is, it's not. Because, you know, take a game like Elder Scrolls Online, all right? You're going to pay, what, $15 a month. If you're going to play the game a lot, you're going to wind up. You're going to wind up do an ESO plus. I'm sorry, that's just the truth. You're going to want the craft bag. So you're going to do this. You're going to pay $15 a month. You're going to do that for 12 months out of the year, right? You're already up to $180 a year for this game. Then they're going to probably do a DLC every year or so, at least, which is cool, but that's going to be another 50 bucks. Okay? And then... You know, on top of it, maybe you're going to do some cash shop stuff too. You might. But I will tell you, the ESO membership is pretty generous with, with the gems it gives you along with your monthly membership. That's cool. So so we'll just say it's about 50 bucks for a DLC and about 180 bucks for the membership. So you're talking, a hun two hun you're talking $230 a year that you're going to pay to play this game. Now, is it top-of-the-line, cutting-edge graphics? No, not really. It's middle-of-the-road graphics. Graphics that were cool when the game launched 10 years ago or something. I mean, they're good. I like them. But they're not, you know, it's not like it's exactly indecipherable from reality kind of kind of um, graphics or anything like that. See, now, now folks, I'm, I'm distracted. This is terrible. Because I, I tamed a spider, and I, I don't like spiders. So I need to... Yeah, I need to get my bear back. All right, we can keep talking now. It's nice to have the spider collected, but I don't want to have a spider following me. I don't like spiders. All right. Well, anyway... But you just have to think about this. And, and when I go through financial decisions, and I start thinking... Is this really a good way for me to spend my money? Is this truly something that I want to give consent to? It's, it's pretty easy to just say, okay, well, it's just $15 for this month. But when you add it up and say over the life of this game, I'm going to pay probably thousands of dollars on this game. And then you compare it to a game like Guild Wars 2 where you're going to buy the game. Maybe you're going to buy something if you, if you see a cosmetic and you think it's cool. But it's totally, totally, you know, voluntary. 
And that's just so refreshing. It's just amazing. It's an amazing feeling to know this game is going to be there anytime I want to log on and play. And there's not a single thing punishing me to say, well, I didn't pay enough money, so therefore I can't enjoy the game fully right now. There's none of that, well, I have to make a decision. Am I going to play this game? Or am I going to pause my subscription for a little while? And then figure out when I actually want to come back. None of that. And I'll tell you another thing. You know, there's so many games I have had in my library. Games I've thought about playing that I haven't played. City builders and other things. And then there I am, paying all this money for some MMO that's going to make me feel like I need to spend as much time as possible in the game. And all those other games, they take the back seat. Other things take the back seat because so many MMOs want you to make them a lifestyle. They don't want to just be another game in the library. They don't want to just be something that you log in and play for a few minutes because it's cool and then you log off and you go do, do whatever it is you're going to do with the rest of your day. They're not like that. They want to be like some kind of a religion. Well... I think consent is very important. And when you decide you're going to go out on an adventure, it really ought to be an adventure of your choosing. Not just settling for something because you feel like you are too far in and you have that sunk, sunk cost or sunk time fallacy working against you. Like you should, you should log in because you truly want to, because it's really exciting and it's really fun and it's rewarding, and it's something that brings joy into your life. And if that's not what it is, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. So, you know, I've gone back and forth a lot on it, and I've thought about it, because there's so many cool games out there that have subscriptions associated with them. But the truth is, I couldn't get past the fact that I kept going back and forth on it. And no matter how much I thought about it and tried to rationalize it, there's no way for me to really honestly tell myself that that's the best deal for my money or that it's really truly bringing joy into my life instead of just basically being something that I I'm sold on the promise you know it's, it's like you see those ads and it looks so cool and it's promising that life is going to be made better by this franchise so you get into it but then the promise doesn't actually fulfill itself it doesn't really deliver it's not like you really get that experience. You ever, you ever, were you ever a kid and you saw these um, videos for action figures or Legos or something, and it was like CGI kind of thing, and it shows that toy tank and it's rolling through World War II battlefield, and it looks so cool, and it's just, you know, it's really just this amazing looking thing, and it's, it's gonna. You just know it would be, it'd be like that if you had that toy. It, it would be alive. Then you get the toy, you go to the Target, you beg for it, you want your parents to buy the toy for, for you, whatever it is, you finally get it, you rip it out of the packaging, and there it is, there is that plastic toy. But there's no CGI, there's none of that special stuff, there's, the gimmicks aren't there, all it is, is just a stupid plastic toy, and now you're like, what am I going to do with this? You don't really care about it anymore, but... You just spent a long time begging for it, wanting it, and knowing your life was going to be so much better if you had it. And yeah, you aren't going to. You can't go back on it now. You got the toy. You got to be excited. But then there's that point where your excitement kind of stalls, and you just know. You know that the joy that you got out of this 
came from that TV commercial, not from the real thing. And that's kind of how it is with with MMOs. They sell you that you're going to go on this grand adventure and you're going to have these amazing friends that you got out of the game and you're going to have this sense of going to another world and escaping all the the you know boredom and monotony of everyday life and things and 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 they kind of sell it that it's basically going to be like this amazing you know secret world you're going to go be part of but then the truth is maybe it isn't it's just something that sucks another fifteen dollars out of the month uh to to you know drain your wallet it's just right there along with Netflix and Amazon Prime and Paramount Plus and Disney Plus and and all the other things that you subscribe to because you just have to have them. Sometimes you have to give up on this stuff, man. It just gets to be too much. When things that are supposed to be bringing joy into our life are actually taking away our peace, that's when we gotta stop it. And for me, Guild Wars 2 is a really amazing opportunity to sink my time mindfully and with consent into a world that is living with other players, that is filled with opportunities to make friends and be part of a, a world that's more alive than a single player game can be more persistent than just a typical multiplayer game would be. It is that classic MMO experience that we long for and hope for, but it's also constructed in a way that's respectful. Respectful of your time, respectful of your money. It doesn't try to make you treat it like more than what it is which is just a cool game made by a little studio in Bellevue, Washington. Not a perfect studio, mind you. I know I've heard plenty of things about ArenaNet being an obnoxious company and whatever. Heard of that about probably almost every, every dev out there, truthfully. I don't think that there's any dev on the face of the planet that doesn't have some people out there talking about how they've lost their way and betrayed the franchise a little bit. <laughs> but all in all, Guild Wars 2 just seems to do the very best out of the franchise of checking overall the most boxes, of being overall good. Not perfect at everything, no, not at all, but overall good. And you know what it's like? And I'll close with this. It's like if you ever had a a uh, abusive relationship and then after that toxic, manipulative relationship, you have another relationship with somebody and they're not the absolute best looking knockout gorgeous necessarily they're not the you know they're not the top of the pack in terms of you know being super wealthy or being super smart or being super capable or being super good looking none of that they're just fundamentally good they're patient they're kind they're understanding they're graceful, they're gentle, and all of those character traits that make you feel safe and respected. Then which one do you choose? Do you want the one that looks good on the front of a vanity magazine, or do you want the one that makes you feel better and feel valued and not feel like you're being manipulated. 
And that's kind of how I see Guild Wars 2 compared to a lot of other games in the MMO space. Whether it's free-to-play games with aggressive monetization or subscription games. And the other side of that is when you have a game like that. I really don't feel like I object to spending money in the cash shop and things like that, if I want to. You know, like I, I bought the, uh, you know, a skin for the, uh, for the Jackal because I thought it was cool, and I think I spent $20 for that. And it doesn't bother me at all, because I didn't have to. I chose to. I chose to just because I thought it was cool and I wanted to. And if I didn't want to because I didn't feel like I wanted to spend $20 that t at that moment, well, that's fine. Guild Wars 2 is a kind of a game where I could recommend it to anybody. Because all you have to do to get essentially the full experience permanently is to buy the game and the expansion packs. And once you do that, then you're good. And... That's, you know, that's an amazing thing, really. So I'd recommend, I'd recommend this game quite a lot for a lot of different reasons. And, and it's not, it's, no, it's not perfect, but it is good. And sometimes you have to remember not to let the perfect become the enemy of the good. You know, I was, I was looking at a video somebody posted of Oblivion, the Elder Scrolls game. Uh, uh, Elder Scrolls 4, I believe it is, and I was thinking about how the graphics are not perfect by modern standards, and yet that game was so amazing to a lot of people. It's very special to a lot of people who played it. And, and I, think, I think it all comes back to this Patience that we really need to start to instill in ourselves. A willingness to see good things in what we have. Instead of always reaching for that new shiny thing. That new thing that's going to give us a better experience. That new gimmick that's going to have a better promise than anything ever before. Because life isn't perfect. And the things that promise to be perfect seldom live up to that expectation. So stop looking for things that are perfect and start looking for things that are good. And stop settling for the subscription model to life. Stop buying into so many things that say you can have unlimited this or that for just nine dollars a month or whatever it is stop buying into all of these things that say they'll give you a really really enormous payoff if you just sell your a little bit of your soul on a monthly basis for the rest of your life we had better experiences when we used to go get movies and just watch them and then we got Netflix and stuff, and suddenly you just spend so much time scrolling, looking for something that's interesting, you never actually find something you even want to watch. We have more choice, more abundance than ever before, and yet we, we lost a sense of specialness along the way. So slow down, slow down and... Make the most of something that's good instead of always reaching for something that's perfect. I do want to I do want to keep on making videos on this channel that are kind of on the topic of just sort of exploring and talking about life, just whatever's on my mind that day, I guess. I don't want them to be super formal because I feel like the best content in the end winds up being the stuff where you just kind of fly off the cuff and you speak your mind and you're genuine and you're authentic and and uh, 
I do want to spend a lot of time just sharing videos of city builders and other single player games that I think are cool, which are more creative, where you just you build something and then you can kind of see that progress and, and share that. Uh, so that's that's part of the channel. But then the other part of the channel is just daily inspirational sort of videos that are just about life. And Guild Wars 2 is going to be the medium for that, where we just, you know, it's not about quests, it's not about anything technical, it's just kind of talking about life, but doing it while, you know, while exploring the land of Tyria. And uh, why? Well, I guess it's more interesting to explore, uh, to talk about boring things when you're, um, when you're exploring somewhere. Kind of like how maybe it's it's fun to, to talk about life while you're walk going for a walk um, down the street or, or for a stroll in the woods because you kind of have something passive to do while you um, you know while you while you talk and mull things over. In, that, in any case, thank you for watching and until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye.